this little song it's called Made Away God is able to make ways out of no way if you believe it give him a great shout come on let
standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith in the best Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win Wrap us in your arms and we step in Everything we need you to Cause you've got this in control Now we know that you Come on, made our way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made our way Thank you, God, for standing here only because you made a way. Come on, let's tell her now. Did you move mountain? You caused walls to fall with your power. Hey. You performed miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. rejoice and be glad in it. If you are grateful, if you are glad that the Lord has granted unto you and to me another day, why don't you just put those glad hands together and give God a hand clap of praise today because God is worthy of all of our praise. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so that God has been truly good. God has made a way out of no way. God has sustained us. God has kept us. God has provided for us. And because God has been so good to us, we can't help it. We can't keep it to ourselves. We've got to give God all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Let me say it one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy Sunday morning to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We greet you this morning in that precious and matchless name, the only name that matters, and that is the name of Jesus, who is both Lord and Christ. We welcome you into the morning worship service of the First Baptist Church of Bay Shore. Worship is different. Praise is different. Our gathering together is different. But God is no different. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And God's word lasts forever. Amen. As we come together this morning, we want to open up with the great hymn of the church. Hymn number 217 in the red hymnals. No not one. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. 217, no, not one. We'll sing the first the second and the fifth verses. First, second, and the fifth verses. Come on, church. Let's lift up your voices to the praise and honor of the Lord. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not None else could hear all our souls. Jesus, oh, no, no not, not one. No, no not, not one. Oh, Jesus. 
saint says he sticks closer even than a brother treats us better than we even treat ourselves and so we are grateful to God that we have this friend greater love no man hath than this than he lay his life down for a friend Jesus is truly our friend we're grateful this morning to have uh, in our presence Deacon Linwood Taylor and we're grateful to God that he is going to offer our morning prayer this morning. So we look to the Lord in prayer. Good morning, church family and children of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, look, let us pray and look to him. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us through so far this year, Lord. Yes. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured out on each one of us. Hallelujah. I don't know what you have done for everyone, but I know that you have washed over families. Yes, God. You have washed over the lives of, of us as we go through this pandemic, Lord. Thank you, you Jesus. Have, you have looked upon this church to allow this church to keep going, Lord, to continue to do your work, to do, to do your will, Lord. We thank you for all of the children and keeping them safe. Yes, keeping them Jesus. Keeping safe out of the schools and allowing them to get home to their families and their parents and just to be safe and sound, Lord. Yes, thank God. That, Lord. We thank you, And we know Jesus. that there are those that are out there that are going through things right now, Lord. Mm -hmm. We know that you are right.
right there by their side. But we want yes, we want them to know. We want you Thank to let you. them know that you are there in spirit, that you are right there yes. with them, Lord. That they can just look to you, just get on their knees and look to you, Lord, and find, Lord, and find some comfort, Lord. Yes. People are hurting and things are going on, Lord, but we know that we have you. Or you're our strength. You are our provider. You yes, are God. our savior, and you are here to, to lift us up and build us up and allow us to continue to keep moving on, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we know that there are those that are sick and are shut in that are in the hospitals. Yes, God. Already in the hospital, maybe maybe COVID has put them in the hospital, Lord. But we know that that you decide whether they make it through this, Lord. We know that you are the decider. We know that you touch the hands of the doctors that heal them and the nurses and all that take care of them. We know that yes, you are Lord guiding God. them and leading them Hallelujah. to get through it, anything that they're getting. Through. Yes, and Jesus. We want everyone to know that is listening to my voice that to know yes, that God. God will get you through. Yes, Lord. The Lord will get you through. If you Thank you, Jesus. Him, if you pray to him, if you ask, he will get you through. Yes. And we pray for those that are hurting because they have lost Jesus. loved ones. Yes, God. The pain is there. Yes, Lord Jesus. Pain is there, Lord. But yes, you know God. That you can comfort them. You're able, God. You can lift that pain. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can allow them to have hope and move forward. Yes, Lord. Jesus. And we thank you. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you yes, for all Jesus. your blessings that you yes, have God. given us, and that you do give us, and that yes, you will Jesus. give us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Go, going on. Hallelujah. Help me sing this out there. I feel like go going on. Hallelujah. Thank yes, you, I do. I feel like like go going on. Go Trials may come on every hand. Oh, I feel like go going on. Those trials, yes, may come. On every hand, I feel yes, I do. like going, like going on. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. We pray this morning that you feel like going on. In the midst of disappointment and trial and tribulation, God, who is the source of our strength and encouragement, helps us to push on through. We want you to know that we're praying with you and for you, that in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of protest and pain throughout our country, and even the resurgence of this coronavirus, we are praying yet for one another. Amen? And that we act accordingly, that we try to do the best that we can to keep ourselves safe and protected, amen. And we want you to continue to tune in to us, amen. We don't want to rush into anything, amen. We don't want to have to do like some places where they've opened up and now they got to close back again, amen. But we want to keep the word going. We want you to mark your calendars. We want you to mark your calendars for the second Sunday in July. Second Sunday in July, which is July 12th, we will have our drive-in service. Drive-in service. I want you to drive on over to the church. Amen. Come and get in the parking lot. We're going to put as many pe people, cars in the parking lot, on the grass. Amen. And we can come together as a church and worship. Amen. Maintaining social distances, waving each other from our cars praising God together. Amen. We want you to come and be a part of it. We're going to start at 945. Amen. And we want you to come and have and, and, and praise God together here at First Baptist Church of Bayshore, 175 Second Avenue. Invite your friends to come along. Amen. That we can worship and praise the Lord together. This month is fastly leaving us. We are here now at 
uh, last Sunday in June and all of this month, all of this month, we have recognized all of our young people uh, and their accomplishments. Um, they're moving up, their graduations, and this day we have some more that we want to share with you. We can only share those who have been sent to us, and we praise God for all of those who have been sent to us. We've been featuring young people all month long, all month long, and today is no different. And so we celebrate our graduates. We celebrate those who finished the, the middle school this week. They had their virtual graduation, their virtual moving up service. Uh, ceremony and we were able to drive through the school and pick up their certificates. Congratulations to each one of you. Amen. As you move to the next phase in your life, in your academic career, we're praying God's strength and God's blessings upon you. To the parents, we are praising God for you, uh, for your steadfastness. Continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Let us celebrate our young people. hand and tell them I squeeze strength into your hands. <laughs> squeeze that hand and say strength to you, strength to you. to all of our young people for your accomplishments this year. We are grateful to God for your steadfastness. Amen. And even though the year ended with you at home and not in your classrooms and not with your friends, I'm grateful to God that you finished strong and you finished, you completed, and we are grateful to God uh, for you. We ask that you continue to keep each and every one in prayer. Amen. It's a way of public service announcement. If you have not, if you have not, my brothers and sisters, filled out the census, please do that. Vitally important for uh, our community. Uh, we pray that you do that so that we will be and can be counted. Amen. Amen. In the midst of all that is going on uh, in our community in the way of, of protest, in the way of discrimination and, and uh, statements that are being made, it is time for the church to come together and pray. And we need to pray, amen, that our world and our community might be a better place, amen, that hearts and minds might be changed and converted. And we're grateful to God for those who are continuing to pray ye one for another. Also, we want to say to you, my brother and my sister, if you are celebrating a birthday, if you're celebrating a birthday, we want to say happy birthday to you. Amen. Whether you did it last week or it's coming this upcoming week, we want you to know that we are celebrating with you and we're congratulating you on another year. Whether it be a birthday or an anniversary, we are praising God for you. Want to invite your attention to our scripture for this morning. Our scripture for this morning, Acts chapter number two. Amen. Acts chapter number two. Uh, and I'm going to start reading at verse number 14. Amen. Um, I just want to read a, a couple of verses to set the context uh, for uh, our message for this morning. Uh, Acts chapter two, uh, starting at verse number 14, you'll find these words recorded. In the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. But Peter 
taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my bond servants, both men and women, I, in, I will in those days pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the skies above and signs in the earth below. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come and it shall come and it shall be that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've read in your hearing Acts chapter 2 verses 14 through 21 the word of God is already blessed. Brother Anthony is going to come back and bless us with a sermonic selection and we will come back with the word of God for this morning. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Oh, I, I will say this is the day that the Lord has, has made. Oh, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Can I do it one more time? Oh, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my in my heart I will enter his court with with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made Oh, I will rejoice. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I will rejoice. For he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice. He has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise oh god is great and greatly to be praised glory glory to his name god is great and greatly to be praised bless the lord oh my soul 
We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you sacrifices of praise. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we thank you and we bless you for the privilege that is ours to stand once again behind this, your sacred desk. We pray even now, Lord God, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart might truly be acceptable in your sight. We pray even now, God, that you would take this broken, fractured, cracked vessel of clay and use me, Lord God, to your glory and your honor. We pray, God, that as we proclaim your word, that you would speak not just to the minds, but to the hearts of those who are listening, that they would get strength and encouragement and hope in the midst of these dark and evil days. We know, Lord God, that no matter what happens on the ground, you are still sitting on the throne high and lifted up. Yes. You're looking down on the earth. Nothing that is happening is catching you or has caught you off guard. Hallelujah. Because you are the omniscient God. You know everything. And so we thank you even now, O oh God, that we're here to be able to offer a word of hope and encouragement to a wounded, fractured, beaten down people. But in the midst of being wounded and beating down, we understand that through Jesus Christ, we are victorious. And so God, we pray that you have your way even now, that your word might accomplish that which it was sent forth to do. We thank you even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the people of God said, amen and amen. I want to invite your attention back uh, to Timothy, I'm sorry, to Luke's second uh, letter, the second installment of the uh, gospel of Luke. Is recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter number two, uh, which highlights for us the day of Pentecost. But I really want to want you to scroll down to verse 14 uh, of the text. But Anthony, I just want to read the first couple of words of verse 14, because that's where I'm going to take my subject from this morning. Um, and I want to do that. I want to do that. I know I read from the Revised Standard Version, but in the King James Version, it says, but Peter, standing up with the eleven. Yes. Amen. But Peter, standing up with the eleven. And I want to talk this morning, I want to tag this text very briefly, standing, in, standing up with power. Yes. Sir. Or standing up in power. Standing up in power. Let me ask this question, and it's rhetorical, but it's also reflective. Have you ever been in a point or a place in your life where you've been, where you felt defeated, where you felt hopeless, yes. where you felt helpless, where you felt that your hands were tied? There's nothing that you could physically do to change the situation or circumstance of that moment. All you could do was just sit and observe and hope for the best. We've been in those situations where we've been in the doctor's room. The doctor has come in and gave us some news and for a moment we felt defeated, deflated. We felt like that there was nothing we could do. Some of you felt that way just a couple months ago when the declaration came down that 
we were shutting down the country and that we were confined to our homes and for a moment, for a couple of days, for a couple of weeks, we felt helpless. We felt that there was nothing that we could do to change the situation or the circumstance of this pandemic that was ravishing our country. We sat in our homes and like you, I was glued to the TV listening to Governor Cuomo's daily updates and listening to CNN and other news outlets, watching the numbers just go up. Yeah. Number of confirmed cases, the number of unfortunate and untimely deaths in our communities. And I felt, Brother Anthony, like I was on an emotional roller coaster. I was up one minute and down the next, and then here comes some other news. And just when we thought we were breaking the curve, just when we thought we were on our way out, here comes another bullet. Here comes another situation, another circumstance, another incident of racial discrimination. Another black eye, if you will, on America. And here we are now, as we're coming out or we're coming out the pandemic, we move from pandemic to protest. We're marching all over this country declaring rights for all people, but more specifically, rights for people of color. Yes. Just seems like more we get, try to get up on our feet, the more we get knocked down. And we come to find out that the protest is because a system has been put in place to continually and constantly keep us down. No matter how hard we try, seems like we just keep getting knocked down. Every day, every day on the news, there is another report of racist rants by individuals. Individuals who feel like they are privileged, that they've been given carte blanche, that they can say whatever they want to and hide behind the freedom of speech amendment and declares their constitutional right. It's not your constitutional right to talk about somebody else. Yeah, it may be your public feelings and keep your public feelings private. Hello, somebody. We feel like we're defeated. There's nothing that we can do. And so we rise up, we stand up, and we march. We march for justice. We march for equality in our community. But most of the times in looking for justice, as it has been said in the past, all we find is just us. There's no justice in America for those of color. There's an imbalance in the way we are treated. Same crimes, don't get same penalties. Hello, somebody. I know that our government says that we have a right, that we are innocent until the state proves us guilty. But the reality for people of color is that we are guilty and we've got to work hard to prove ourselves innocent. Not so for other ethnic groups in this country. They're given the benefit of the doubt, a slap on the wrist. And yet, they eventually lose their jobs, but things that if we had done it, we would not only lose our job, we would have been incarcerated. This imbalance of un injustice in this country is not fair. And so people are asking, well, if the people that are making these rants making these racist comments, making these racial posts, if they are being fired and terminated, then why are people still marching? Why are they still protesting? Well, because we're marching and we're protesting, we're standing up, not just so that justice may be done, but we're marching and we're protesting to change the system, to change the hearts of men and women in this country 
that feel that they are privileged to do whatever they want to do. And so is the case in Acts chapter 2. That here, the day of Pentecost has fully come, and those 11 disciples, 12 disciples of Jesus, have been filled with the Holy Spirit. When we read the context of Acts chapter 2, there's 120 that are in the upper room that have been filled with the Holy Ghost and now they're speaking with other tongues and they have come out of the upper room and they are marching through the city. They are in the city of Jerusalem speaking with other tongues with power as the Spirit of God gives them utterance. And we find out that they're not just rambling along, but what they are speaking is the gospel, is the good news. The good news that Jesus, who was crucified, dead, and buried, is now raised from the dead. A big brother who was crucified, who was found guilty in a kangaroo court. Our big brother, who was beaten, brutalized, was hung on a cross. Some washed their hands and claimed they didn't have anything to do with it. But here, the risen Savior has dispatched the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has come upon those who walked with Jesus and saw ministry of Jesus firsthand. I healed the sick, raised the dead, gave lame legs strength, blind eyes, vision, and deaf ears were unstopped. Here they are empowered by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, according to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But there were some, just like those today, who are asking the question, why are they marching? Why are they protesting? What's going on in the streets? And somebody declared, as the text said, they just drunk. They labeled them. They said they just drunk. They just filled with new wine early in the morning. And it would have stayed that way. But Peter, but Peter, standing up with power, made a declaration. Peter, standing up in the midst of the multitude of people who are in Jerusalem, we know that there's more than 3,000 because 3,000 responded to the words of Peter later on in this same chapter. So you got 120 versus 3,000 plus that are already in their mind labeled them, already categorized them, already put them in their place. These men are drunk. They're intoxicated, they're inebriated, they're, they're not consciously aware of what's going on in this city and in this town. They're, they're so caught up in the celebration of the feast that they don't even know what's going on. But Peter, Peter, standing up in the midst, declared, we are not drunk. Let me put a comma here for a moment and pose a question. What happened to Peter? Is this the same Peter who in Luke's first epistle, his first letter and his first gospel, that when Jesus was captured, is this the same Peter that cowered and followed from a distance as Jesus was being carried away? Is this the same Peter that when he was identified as one that was with Jesus, declared emphatically that I don't even know him? He wanted to take a step back and try to disconnect or disassociate himself with Jesus. But they kept saying, no, 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 your, your speech gives you away. Your life and your actions. Hallelujah. See, when you've been with Jesus, you can't deny that you've been with Jesus. When your life has been transformed by Jesus, you can't deny that because there's something on the inside of you that's going to come out regardless. And after Jesus is killed, the same Peter, hearing the cock crow and 
made aware of the prophecy of Jesus that he was going to deny him. Peter was sorrowful. Peter was sorrowful and withdrew himself. But three days later, when Jesus raises from and is risen from the dead, he gives the women a message. He says, go tell my disciples and Peter that I've risen from the dead. Yes, this is the same Peter, the same Peter, the same Peter that walked with Jesus, the same impulsive Peter, the same Peter that pulled out his knife and cut off the ear of one of the soldiers that came to arrest Jesus. The same Peter that always had his mouth running, always had something to say. Then when Jesus asked, whom do men say that I am, the other disciples quoted some scripture, but it was Peter that said, no, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. It was this impulsive Peter who had become quiet because of his sinful actions of denying Jesus that gets a word from Jesus, a message from Jesus that Jesus is alive and he's coming to Jerusalem and he wants to see Peter. When we feel these times that we are busted and disgusted and broke and at the end of our rope, at the bottom of the barrel, when we feel hopeless, we feel helpless, there's a message from Jesus. And that message from Jesus is don't get weary in well doing, don't give up. I saw a picture a few days ago of a cat hanging on to a kitten, hanging on to a rope. And the message at the bottom, Brother Anthony says, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hold on. Hold on because it's not the end. See, if you've made it to the bottom of your barrel, there's no other way but up. And so Peter, having this encouraging message from Jesus, having seen Jesus face to face, he hangs in there and the day of Pentecost comes and Peter is filled with power from on high. And when the moment comes, when the opportunity comes for Peter to stand up, Peter stands up. It might have seemed like it was hopeless when Jesus died. It might have seemed like that there was no opportunity for us to move forward. Matter of fact, some of the disciples went back to doing what they were doing before Jesus even came into their lives. And it was Peter who declared, well, I'm going to go back to fishing. But when he got the message from Jesus, when he got a message from Jesus that Jesus was alive and he was coming to see him, he had renewed hope, he had renewed strength, he had renewed vigor, he had new purpose in life. And he and the disciples go back to, to Jerusalem to wait for the promise of the Father, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, the beginning of this chapter, the Holy Spirit comes. And they are all filled with the Holy Ghost and they receive power. And in the midst of this powerful transformation, this introduction of the New Testament church into the world, it is Peter who is the hallmark of the day. That's what Jesus was saying when he said to Peter, Peter, Satan desires you and to have you as wheat to sift you, to try you, to try to trip you up, to try to keep you from standing up. Beloved, we have been tripped up, we have been tried, we have been persecuted, we have been in tribulation on every side, but I need to tell you it's now time to stand up with power as people are calling names of the disciples calling them drunk and mocking them on this holy and righteous day it is Peter that rises up in the midst of the eleven rises up in the midst of the multitude stands up in the midst of controversy and declares we are not drunk we're not inebriated we're not confused. We're not lost. We know what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is Jesus. He stands up. He takes a stand in the midst of the 11. He doesn't stand up because he has 
popularity or overwhelming support because these disciples are outnumbered by the other Jews who are in Jerusalem. These are the very Jews that hollered crucify Jesus and could have very easily said crucify Peter and all of the other disciples. They could have very easily grabbed them. But instead of having fear, Peter had power. Peter had strength. And so when we look at this passage, when we stand up for what we believe, and when we stand up in power, we stand up in a position of strength and not weakness. We stand up in strength because greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Truth is more powerful than a lie. Seems like a lie goes for further. Seems like a rumor goes further. It seems like when we stand up for truth that we just keep getting beat down time and time and time again. But we have continued to stand up. Through the civil rights movement, we as a people continue to stand up. Hallelujah. They killed some of our patriots of the past. Assassinated Martin Luther King. They assassinated Kennedy. Those who would stand for right and justice. And even others who have declared I've done nothing wrong have been shot down and murdered in the streets. We're only standing up in power not to promote violence, but we stand up to declare the truth. We stand up like power, like Peter in power. We stand up in strength in numbers to declare what is right, what is the truth of the word of God, that all men are created equal. Hallelujah. Not just because the Constitution says it, but because God created each one of us in his image and his likeness. We stand up in strength because with truth there is strength. Truth that is crushed to the ground shall rise again. But not only in standing up do we stand in a position of strength, but we also stand up in a position of passion. This is not a fad for us. This is our lifestyle, declaring what's right, declaring justice and civil rights for all people. It is a passion, and it should be a passion of humanity. Peter stands up because of his passion for Jesus, and he stands up and he confronts the powers that be. He says unto the Jews, you killed Jesus. You strung him up. You crucified him. A man that was proven by God that did nothing but good in your midst. You crucified him. Only by the power of God could Peter stand up in the midst and point his holy finger and indict the multitudes in Jerusalem. Beloved, we have the divine power of God to stand up and declare what is truth, what is right. And declare it with passion. Passion is not something that's painted on the outside or the exterior. It is not a facade, but it is ingrained and inculcated in the individuals who have been the products of suffering and slavery and shame. Some people say, oh, well, I have a lot of people, a lot of friends of color. Well, that doesn't mean that you're not a racist. I have a lot, I associate with a lot of people like you. That doesn't mean that I'm not a racist. See, racism is not a mental concept. It's something that has grown into the lives of individuals. Hatred is taught. Racism is taught. And those people who feel privileged that they can say and do whatever they want to do with no consequences, a system that is put in place that will not prosecute them, that will not hold them accountable, will allow this system and this attitude to permeate our communities and continue to push some down and lift up others. But God said it is time for those to stand up in power, not to promote violence, but to stand up in power and proclaim what is the truth. Peter didn't stand up with a sword. Peter didn't stand up with a gun, but he stood up with the word of God. 
He stood up with truth. That puts him in a position of strength. That puts him in a position of passion. But lastly, in standing up in the city of Jerusalem before this multitude of people, standing up puts Peter in a position of persuasion. And all we're trying to do, beloved, when we stand up to declare our right, when we stand up to defend men and women of color, stand up for those who have different orientations for us, we stand up in a position of persuasion. Violence doesn't persuade anybody. Violence only promotes other violence. But when we stand up and we speak the truth, if you read the remaining verses of chapter 2, Peter stands up with strength and passion and the power of persuasion. As he begins to talk about Jesus, as he began to talk about what the Jews did to Jesus. And he talked about how they crucified him. He talked about how they allowed him to be brought before a kangaroo court. As he talked about the injustices upon Jesus. The Bible says when he spoke the truth that their hearts were pricked. So you need to understand, we're not just marching to be marching. We're not just saying what we're saying just to be saying it. But we're saying that hearts might be pricked. That hearts, not minds, but hearts might be changed. That eyesight might be changed. And that we will begin to look at each other in a unified vision. That understand that we're all vital components of this community and this world. Regardless of our color, we are all God's children. And some have been on the bottom trying to work their way up. Men and women of color have been pushed down time and time again. But now we're standing up in the power of truth. And we're declaring that we are somebody. People are declaring, oh, black lives matter. All lives matter. But today, black lives matter because black lives and brown lives are the ones that are being killed and murdered and persecuted in the streets and in, hallelujah, unjust courtrooms. Our big brother is a precursor yes. of what is continuing to happen in our world today. But just like Peter, we're standing up. We're standing up in power. We're standing up in a position of strength as we stand together. We're standing up in a position of passion because this is real for us. It's not a political move. It's not a political position. We just can't peel off our color. This is the way we were born. Yes. Hallelujah. We're made in the image and likeness of God. And we are to be respected. We are to be loved. We are a community that should love one another, that should treat others like we want to be treated. Peter stands up and he preaches the word of God. And the word of God, the truth, pricks the heart of these men of Jerusalem and Judea. And they cry out, they cry out, what can we do? What can we do in the midst of what has already happened? Some people are asking the question, what can we do to change over 200 years of racism? What can we do to turn the tides? Here is what Peter says unto them, and I think it bears relevance even today. He says, repent, confess. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your wicked ways of discrimination. Turn from your wicked ways of persecuting men and women of color. Denounce racist systems that continue to push us down. That's what you do. Repent and look to the hill from which cometh all of our help. Not Capitol Hill, but a hill called Calvary, where our big brother Jesus suffered, bled, and died. As I prepare to close this message this morning of standing up in power, yes. when I was a little boy, I was given a gift. 
Oh, Brother Anthony, it was a gift. The gift was very interesting. It opened up, and I opened up the package, and the box said, Bozo the Clown. Hello, somebody. I didn't understand what it was, but I opened it up. I followed the instructions, and I blew up Bozo the Clown. And Bozo the Clown was a punching bag, and you could just punch Bozo, and you could just punch him. But the way Bozo was designed, that when you punched him, he fell down. But then he popped right back up again. I wish I had some help in here. Somebody know what I'm talking about? We've been yeah. Bozo the Clown through the years. We've been punched continuously through the civil rights movement, through Jim Crow, through segregation. Hallelujah. We've been punched, but every time uh, we've got punched, uh, we've been able uh, to bounce back up again. Um, we were able to bounce back up again uh, because there was power down on the inside. Uh, you see, Bozo had some weights uh, in the bottom, uh, and every time I would hit Bozo, or every time I push Bozo, the, the weights on the inside of Bozo uh, would bring him uh, back up again. Uh, I stopped by to tell you this morning uh, that we've got some power um, down uh, on the inside uh, that every time uh, we get knocked down, uh, we bounce right back up again. Uh, we don't have to revert, uh, hallelujah, to violence. Uh, people are raving about violence uh, and blaming it on us, uh, but we don't need violence. Uh, all we need to do uh, is stand up uh, in the power that is ours. Uh, stand up uh, in the truth uh, of God's word. Uh, stand up. Uh, they're still going to punch us. Uh, they're still going to try to knock us down. Uh, but can I give you a word of encouragement? Uh, it is Paul that declared uh, no weapon uh, formed against you uh, shall prosper. Uh, they're still going to put systems in place. Uh, they're still going to be racist police officers. Uh, but no weapon uh, formed against us uh, shall prosper. Uh, they may knock us down, uh, but we're going to keep on standing. Uh, we're going to keep on marching. Uh, we're still going to declare uh, what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and we we're going to declare it uh, to hearts get changed. Uh, we're going to declare it uh, to there's a new thinking uh, in the mindset uh, of Americans. Uh, we're going to keep on uh, declaring uh, what thus said the Lord uh, until, um, until uh, a change comes uh, and change uh, is going to come because uh, God is uh, still in control. Uh, God is uh, still on the throne uh, and truth uh, that's crushed to the ground uh, just like Jesus uh, it shall rise uh, it shall rise uh, we shall rise uh, truth shall rise uh, joy shall rise uh, celebration shall rise uh, unity shall rise uh, brother and sisterhood shall rise uh, and we all We'll see the glory of the Lord together. We'll all be one. Yes. We will all be together under the Lordship of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is both Lord and Christ. So keep standing. Keep standing up in the power. But don't just stand. Declare the truth. That we are somebody. We don't have to wait for America or Congress to declare that we're somebody. God has already declared that men and women of color, you are somebody. You are somebody. And God loves everyone. And he loves all of us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In the light of ill treatment, in the light of Jim Crow, in the light of 
segregative acts where we've been pushed down and pressed down and marginalized might seem like there's, there's nothing that we can do some have even said the world this nation is never going to change it's always going to be a racist system and a racist institution well, I'm here to tell you if you keep standing up for the truth if you open your mouth and declare the truth change will come just like these men in Jerusalem our nation will come to its senses and declare what can we do we were pricked in our hearts and legislations and laws will change but even more so than laws because you can't legislate morality that through our prayers that hearts will be changed and we'll be able to see each other as God's children We'll be able to respect each other and the gifts and the talents that God has given each one of us. This world will be a better place. These United States of America will be a better place. When we all come to that place, that position of power where we can stand up, stand up in positions of strength and passion and influence, influence one another to love and not hate. Influence one another to receive and not reject. Beloved, I'm here to tell you today that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect, but God's grace and mercy extends to all of us. And if we would confess him as Lord and Savior, we can be saved. We can be renewed. We can be regenerated. We can be given a new place in God. And we find out that it is only because of the grace of God that we are where we are. We'll begin to look at each other differently. Hallelujah. None of us have individual preferential treatment. The same drop of blood that was shed on Calvary. It's the same drop that saves me and saves you. If you're listening to this and your heart has been pricked, you've been asking yourself, what can I do to change the scope? Of reality is right there. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Hallelujah. Be no longer silent, but open up your mouth and declare what thus saith the Lord. Speak the love, the un unconditional love of God, which is to all people. The book of Romans said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved that's a promise. That's a guarantee and that your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. Beloved, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that when we all get to heaven, there's not going to be a, a colored side of heaven or a white side of heaven or a Baptist side of heaven or a Pentecostal side of heaven or a Catholic side of heaven. Hello, somebody. It's going to be one heaven. Is that the place where Jesus is going to be? And all his people will be gathered together before his presence and we're all going to have to come the same way we're all going to have to confess our sins before him and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior it's her Lord and Savior that's how God has designed the plan it's not for some it doesn't reject others it's open to all Father we thank you and we bless you today and in the midst of controversy in this world, in the midst of protests in this world, in the midst of an unfair and unjust system in this world, you are a God of justice. You are a God who is proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah that one day that you're going to make the mountains low and you're going to elevate the valleys and the crooked places are going to be made straight. The rough places are going to be made plain. You are going to do that. And God, we say thank you. That in the midst of all that's going through or we're going through, you're in the midst of bringing about your plan for the world. And so we thank you right now that we are a people that love you. We are a people who have understand that you love us in spite of us. We're not going to rise up in violence, but we're going to pray ye one for another. We're going to look to the hill. We're going to lift our enemies before you, God, that through our lives and through our standing up with power and proclaiming the truth, hallelujah, that hearts and minds might be converted and turned to you in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that this word has been a good word. 
that this word may accomplish that which it was sent forth to do, that all of your children, brothers and sisters, black and white, might confess you as Lord and Savior and come unto the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is both Lord and Christ, we pray. And all the people of God said, amen, and amen, and amen. I pray that you have been blessed today. I pray that this word has stirred you up. I pray that this word helps you to realize that there is power down on the inside of every believer to stand up and proclaim the truth. I pray this week, instead of getting upset, instead of getting, hallelujah, revenge, and ready to go out and tap some stuff stand up and proclaim what is the truth that we are all God's creatures hallelujah saved by the unselfish sacrificial act of Jesus who is both Lord and Christ now unto him who is able to keep each one of us from falling and to present us faultless before his divine majesty with exceeding great joy, be power, dominion, and peace from henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah, amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, let the church say Let, Let the, the church, church say amen. amen. God, God has spoken. spoken. Let so the let the church say amen. Go in peace. And may the peace of God go with you. We look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless you. Stand, watch the Lord.